what would you say to other researchers and practitioners um, about why they should listen to the perspectives of the people who this is impacting, even when there may be challenges in doing so? Um, I mean, I, I, I think, I think there's a kind of terrible irony at the heart of what you've just described, which is that, you know, largely neurotypical researchers, of course, not all, but largely neurotypical researchers for generations, yeah, well, for decades, have been um, labeling autistic people, for example, as lacking empathy, um, while showing a devastating lack of empathy themselves for autistic lived experience. And as you say, for the kind of emotional burden and the potential trauma that um, that can arise from being an autistic person trying to get by in the world today. Mm -hmm. um, I think similarly, you know, we label autistic people as being rigid and inflexible, and yet we refuse to adapt what we're doing, our processes and our methods as researchers or our practices in a classroom or, or in a clinic setting. Um, we we talk about autistic people as having communication impairments and utterly fail to recognize that communication happens between people it's not something that one person does on their own and so we are equally responsible for any failure to effectively communicate and more so often because we are you know if we're adults and they are children whose responsibility is it to make that communication work it is the yeah. adults um, so I think, I think that, um, I just think that researchers need to take a long, hard look at themselves in the mirror and say, am I really helping people? What did I get into this job to do? You know, and, um, uh, and as I say that, I think it's really important to be explicit that I am not I am not some sort of paragon of virtue when it comes to this. I'm constantly failing in, in the most basic way to, to live up to some of the principles I've described in, in the talk today. You know, I, I, the autistic people who work with me will know that I regularly, um, you know, fail to share power as effectively as I can. I, I send things out and I think, oh, it's a rush. I really need to look at it today. And, you know, all of these things, I mean, absolute kind of, you know, sort of participatory research 101 kind of <laughs> basic errors. Um, but like everything in research, like everything in science, we just commit to doing better and to reflecting on uh, the limitations of our work and learning from those limitations and, and producing something higher quality next time. And, um, and it, 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 it's no different, you know, um, so that's my, that's what allows me to sort of fall asleep at night, despite my many failings. Um, and I think, I think, I think it requires a bit of a sort of pushback against, you know, the, the sort of academic ego that, um, that is such a healthy part of being an academic. <laughs> Uh, to, to show a little humility and a little a little um, uh, self-reflection as as researchers. <laughs>